Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another random review. Today we're going to talk about a release from um, one of Vinegar Syndrome's partners but it's not Death Crocodile, it's Fun City Editions for a film that's not really in Fun City. This is 1979's Natural Enemies, um, written, directed and edited um, by Jeff Canu. Starring Hal Holbrook, Louise Fletcher, Jose Ferrer, Viveka Linfors. But as with all or most um, Vinegar Syndrome partners, you do have the lovely embossed slipcover. And that's the standard Blu-ray. Um, and you get a nice booklet as well. This is an absolute... Um, cracker of a film, one that I would highly recommend. It's kind of in between uh, Louis Malle's Le Faux Follet or Will o' the Wisp or The Fire Within um, starring Manish Rene and Ingmar Bergman's Scenes from a Marriage from 1974. It's based on a book and um, Hal Holbrook is the central character we open the film with his voiceover um, about how um, he woke up this morning and a voice told him that today is the day you're going to go to work, come back and shoot your wife, your three children and yourself. Um, his opening monologue continues that every man thinks about killing um, his family. Um, some do it for the wrong reasons. Um, and some just can't help themselves. Now, as much as I love Bergman, Scenes of a Marriage isn't one of my favourite Bergmans, um, and films about marriage <clears throat> don't really interest me that much. Fortunately, I've never been married, and fortunately I never will be married. Um, but if you add the oh, maybe this guy's going to kill his whole family and himself, then I'm interested. Um, so we follow Hal Holbrook through his day as very much like Maurice Ronnie in Le Faux Follet. He goes around, he talks to people um, to try and perhaps find a reason not to kill his wife, his three children and himself. Um, he has Jose Ferrer as a kind of diplomat friend, um, Viveka Linfors, who's only in one scene but um, tries to steal the show as always. As a psychiatrist, um, Louise Fletcher, who obviously fairly recently had won the Oscar for One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest, is absolutely fantastic. Hal Holbrook, who just has one of those faces, is absolutely fantastic. It is a kind of chamber piece. There's a lot of talking, um, but it is kind of mixed in with the internal monologue of Hal Holbrook. Um, plus, during his lunch hour, um, he goes to a brothel to have sex with five women. And he kind of tells them about his marriage and his wife... And there's a beautiful scene where he's dozed off um, and the five women are kind of talking about him and it's probably his fault and kind of they have a little almost Greek chorus discussion about men in general. Um, again, I'm not going to be in the position of being with the same person for year after year, day after day, month after month, week after week decade after decade, century after century, millennia after millennia. Um, but I can't imagine that it's 
absolutely horrible. And this film really does um, focus in on that. Um, Hal, Hal, Hal Holbrook, um, he's a magazine editor and owner of a magazine called The Scientific Man. Um, and he, there's wonderful scenes where prospective authors come in to write an article for his column. Um, there's a beautiful one with an astronaut who wants to write about how he felt going up into space and the awe and all that. Um, which um, Holbrook cuts through um, quite well. And again, it's about isolation. He is a commuter, which I can certainly understand, um, and lives a kind of robotic um, every day is like deja vu all over again. Um, because some of us, when we're young, have dreams of what we'll do in later life and how our life's going to work out, and obviously life doesn't really work out like that because um, life is a big pile of something or other. Um, it's not any surprise that this film was pretty much forgotten about and only kind of revived by Fun City using the 35 mil print that was in the Library of Congress. But again, if to me it's, it was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can look at it from a distance, um, you know, because Holbrook's character, you know, hypothesises that every man fantasises about killing his wife and children and himself. Obviously, if you're watching this and you have um, a wife and children, you can let me know in the comments if you've ever felt about killing them all and then killing yourself. Um, Again, I just found because it's a kind of clocking, a ticking clock, not a clocking tick. That's a completely different film. A ticking clock film where we as the audience have always obviously been introduced to this idea at the start of the film that he's going to kill his family um, that night. Um, and as we map out his day, as he talks about um, his plans and obviously talks about his relationship with his wife um, and Louise Fletcher had a kind of breakdown she was in hospital for a while and that kind of um, changed the relationship about I mean once after the intro scene where he kind of puts forth his manifesto to the audience um, he goes and has sex with Louise Fletcher in bed which is more of a kind of assault, basically, because she's just lying there and he um, enjoys himself, even though it's arguably the coldest, bleakest um, sex scene in cinema history. Um, there's a wonderful scene later on in the film where the train home that he's on breaks down and it's just shot in red light and he has a conversation with a woman he's sitting next to it's, a, it's an actor's film in the sense there's just lots of great dialogue um, to speak. So again, it's perhaps a little bit um, dialogue heavy, but I kind of love that kind of thing. Um, but if you're looking for action and stuff, it's perhaps not that kind of film. Um, but I just thought it was absolutely tremendous. Um, and it is brutal. Um, both Fletcher and Holbrook just go at each other um, for large parts of the film, beautifully acted. Um, this was Jeff Canoe's first film. Um, he made a living cutting trailers originally. Um, he cut trailers for all the President's Men and The Graduate um, before um, making this film. Granted, he would go on to make Revenge of the Nerds, um, V.I. Um, Warshawski with Kathleen Turner, Tough Guys with Burt Lancaster and Kurt Douglas, which all those films are nothing like this. I mean, this is 
bleak. Um, I guess if you're in your 50s and you've been married or in your 60s and you've been married, this might be a difficult watch. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Because um, as I say, I'm not stricken in that sense. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and Fun City... It is not. But Fun City Editions have done a really good job um, giving it a 2K scan on the 35mm print. It give it, then they do give you a nice little... You know, some bits might not look amazing just because of the um, archive that they used. There is a wonderful... Um, the Road to Natural Enemies, it's a two-part interview um, with Jeff Canoe where he gives wonderful anecdotes about the people who could have been cast in the film, the relationship with Louise Fletcher and Holbrook. Um, he just comes across as a really amiable guy. He's funny um, in his journey of how he got involved in film and then obviously cutting trailers and then ending up being a director is quite fascinating how he kind of muddled through the first couple of days of shooting um, and again the on set antics how he got money for the film um, always kind of being promised money from the film um, Robert Redford was involved as far as getting it off the ground um, and that's how Jeff um, Canoe actually edited Ordinary People um, so it, it's a fascinating two part interview with him there's a trailer, there's an alternate ending and there's also an introduction um, by Canoe um, to the film so it's one I would highly recommend it's not a Death Crocodile but it is a, another Vinegar Syndrome um, partner as I do tend to talk more about Vinegar Syndrome's partner than actual Vinegar Syndrome titles, because I don't actually have that many Vinegar Syndromes. I think I've got one, that's just because it's a Christopher Walken film. Um, but certainly, Death Crocodile, Fun City, I think I've got four or five Fun City um, releases. This is an absolute corker. Um, if you're looking for a good time, probably not this. But if you're looking for a a lovely, bleak little film about a man who thinks he might as well end it all and take his family with him, it's an absolute pleasure. So thanks very much for watching this random review. Please let me know if you've seen Natural Enemies and what you think of it. And hope you'll join me again for more random reviews in the future. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell.